Welcome to Sewing Anastasia, and today we're gonna make a super cute apron with gathers and ruffles and frills and pockets with embroidered kittens. It's going to be so cute. This video is a part of my holiday gift giving guide for 2022. So make sure you check out that playlist to see all of my other gift giving ideas. And this gift was actually requested. So my mom asked for an apron for Christmas and she said, just go all out, do whatever you want. Put pockets, put ruffles, put gathers, put trims, do whatever you want. So I started researching super cute vintage aprons and I found all these details that I really liked. I really liked when the aprons had a flare to them so that way there was more movement to them when you're moving. I know I've worn aprons before that are straight down and it really restricts your movement. So I really wanted her to be able to move around in this apron comfortably. So. This apron has a circle bottom to it. And then I wanna do something interesting with the top so it wasn't just a plain old rectangle. So we have a unique shape to the top. And when I was researching aprons, I found all of these adorable pockets. One of my favorites was a chicken pocket. Check that out. It is so cute. There were some other ones that were really fun like strawberries and fruits and flowers. It was just all over the place and I loved them all so much and I couldn't decide, but she had a request for kittens. So I decided to pick out an embroidery and embroider a kitten pocket. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over all the pieces that have already cut out and then we're gonna get into sewing up this apron. So the first piece is going to be the big circle bottom here. So this is going to drape beautifully when we wear it from the waist down. Now this doesn't completely close in the back and obviously it's gonna depend on how big you are as well. But basically it's a circle skirt front with an extension on it for both sides. So we've got the piece for the bottom of the skirt. We have our super fun piece for the bodice of the apron. I'm going to be using ribbons for the neckties around the top of the bodice there. And now I have some rectangles here. One is for the waist of the apron. And then I have two more for the ties at the waist of the apron. Next, you're going to have to have two pockets because you got to keep all of your goodies in your pockets, right? So I designed a really fun curved pocket here and I decided to do embroidery on one of them. So I embroidered this cute little kitten in white embroidery thread on one of the pockets and then cut it out. And then I cut out so many yards of ruffles. Ruffles, ruffles, ruffles galore. So I finished the edges of this piece of fabric for the ruffle with a baby rolled hem on the serger. And it took a hot minute, but it looks beautiful. So after you have all of your pieces cut out, the next thing you wanna do is finish all of your edges. So I'm gonna be using the serger today, but if you don't have a serger, no big deal. Just make sure you zigzag or overcast your edges so that way the fabric doesn't fray and fall apart while you're working with it. And it's gonna give it a nice professional look. And we're all done surging. Everything's all surged up and it's looking beautiful on all of the edges. And next we're going to finish up the pockets and apply them to the front of the apron. So to finish up the pockets, what we wanna do on the curved edge here is turn it to the inside about three eighths of an inch and then just top stitch that down so the edge has a nice clean finish. And now the other edges of the pocket, I just want you to iron those in right now, three eighths of an inch, so the side, the bottom, the other side, and then the little part on the top here. And then we will apply it to the apron and we'll do a nice edge stitch and top stitch around those sides, leaving open the curved area for our hand to get into the pocket. And we're going to do that to both of our pockets. Now we're gonna turn under that top edge of the pocket and sew it down. And we're gonna do this to both pockets. So you can see on the inside, we have that edge turned over and sewn down, and then it looks like this on the outside. Now that our pockets are prepped, let's stitch them to the bottom of the apron. Our pocket edges are all finished and we're ready to place the pockets on the bottom of the apron. So grab your ruler and your pins and let's measure out these pockets and place them. So you can kind of place your pockets wherever you like, um, but for me, when I'm wearing the circle, these are in a really nice direction. 
So at the top edge of the pocket here, this is 11 inches from the back edge on the top. And then at the bottom, it's about 13 inches from the back edge here. So that's how it is angled out on the side here. And then you're gonna measure down three and a quarter inches from the top edge of the skirt. And then you're gonna have your pocket positioned like so. Next, we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and we're gonna do a little edge stitch all the way around those ironed undersides. And then we're gonna do a top stitch right next to that edge stitch. These two stitches are so important to make sure your pocket is extra durable and strong. So let's go sew both of these pockets down. So I'm gonna start with the edge stitch. Now we're gonna sew down our other pocket. I got the pockets on and it's looking great. Now it's time to attach the waistband. Now we're gonna take the waistband, we're gonna flip it right sides together and we're gonna start pinning at one end and work our way all the way around the apron waist. Okay, now we're gonna go sew this down with a half inch seam allowance. Don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and the end of this. And now I'm going to create a top stitch on the waistband, making sure I'm sewing on top of the seam allowance. And this is gonna help keep our band up. Back stitch at the beginning. Back stitch at the end and cut. Now that we have the waistband on, we are going to sew the bodice of this apron. You know, the little flap that goes up here that goes around your neck, we're gonna sew that together. So we've got that waistband on, it's looking great. And now we gotta prep our bodice. So I have two of these cut out and we're gonna place them right sides together. And because this is an interesting shape up here, we're going to use two layers right sides together and we're gonna sew all the way around, leaving the bottom open. And then we're gonna clip our points and our curves and we're gonna flip it right side out and then we'll do a nice top stitch and then we will attach it to the waistband. So I'm gonna be sewing this all the way around with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch at the bottom and cut. And now we need to cut off our corners. And then go ahead, I need some regular scissors here. So we are going to clip off our corners and we are just going to cut into the curves here so it turns real nice. Don't forget to clip down into the point all the way to that stitch line. Give yourself some snips here so that way it turns nice and smooth. Cut off that other corner. And then cut into the curve here. Excellent. Now let's turn it right side out and give it a good press. Now I'm going to top stitch all the way around the edge of the bodice. Back stitch and cut. Now that we have the bodice complete, it is nice and crisp and flat with that double layer and the top stitch. Now we need to sew it to the waistband of the apron. So you want to find the center of your bodice and the center of the waist of your apron so that way we can line these up so that way everything is symmetrical. When we sew these, we're gonna sew them right sides together and then go ahead and pin these layers together. Now what we're gonna do is sew a half inch from end to end of the bodice. After we've sewn the bodice on, we're gonna take the top edge and we're gonna turn it under a half inch and we're gonna do a nice top stitch so that way it matches the bottom top stitch of the waistband. And that top stitch is gonna go all the way across the waistband, make sure you're going over the bodice and all the way to the other end. So let's go sew that bodice on and give that waistband a top stitch. So don't forget, we have a half inch seam allowance here. And now we're gonna turn that edge under and top stitch it down. And we're gonna do this from the back of the apron here. So 
So we got the top of the apron sewn on, looking super cute. And we've got the waistband nice and finished. Now what we need to do is finish off the back edge and sew some straps on. So let's go over the details. So first thing we're gonna do is take the back edge and we're gonna flip it in an inch, iron it, and then just stitch it down. So we want a nice thick fold here so that way it doesn't want to pop away from the back when you're wearing it. And that's super easy. So I'm just gonna go sew that down real quick. So we've got that edge flipped in and sewn down. It looks great on the inside and on the outside. Now it's time to attach the straps. The first thing I'm gonna do is attach the ribbon neck straps to the top of the bodice. So I'm gonna place them behind the bodice and then just stitch them down from the front so it looks nice and neat. And I'm going to do that to both sides right behind the points of the bodice. So we're sewing right to the tip of the bodice and we're working our way around the triangle here, trying to make it nice and neat. And I know your fabric can get really thick up here. So take your time and go slow if you're using a really thick fabric. I'm gonna move it just a little bit. We're gonna turn. And this could be a little different for you if you have a different type of ribbon or different type of strap you wanna put up here. So when you're done, just backstitch and cut. So we now have the neckties sewn on to the bodice of the apron and they're looking great. I love that they're satin, so they're gonna be nice and soft around your neck. Next, I'm going to sew the waist straps on. Now these waist straps, you might be wondering why they look so fancy. It's because I folded them and put a decorative stitch on them. Now that takes kind of forever and I know you didn't wanna watch me do that forever. So I went ahead and prepped them. So now we're ready to sew them on the waist. So if you'd like to add decorative stitching to your strap and you have a really thick fabric that you can't turn right side out through a tube, so what you wanna do is iron it an inch in and then go ahead and iron it over three quarters of an inch. And then what you're going to do is stitch right down the middle of the strap and then it's going to capture that edge and it's gonna give you a beautiful decorative stitch on the outside. So you'll notice this one has a nice finished edge in the back. I serged it first, and then it has that decorative stitch on the back and on the front. So to attach the strap to the waist, I'm going to place it under the waistband about an inch, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew a box right around where the strap is, keeping it nice and secure. Now we're gonna sew that waist strap on, make sure you're back stitching. And at first I'm sewing over the stitch that's already there from the one inch fold for hemming the side. And I'm gonna work my way around a little rectangle here to make it nice and secure. I'm gonna come all the way over to the edge of the fold. We're gonna make sure I'm doing a little edge stitch there so it's nice and close. And now we're gonna turn and come back. You know what, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and put a nice little slash through the box to make it extra strong. Backstitch and cut. Now we're gonna do the other side. Backstitch and cut. Now we have our waist ties on and they are looking great and durable and they're gonna make it through so many batches of cookies, right? I think so. So now we have one last step left and that is attaching this gorgeous, beautiful plaid ruffle to the very bottom of it. So we're gonna set up the gathering foot on the sewing machine and we're gonna gather this giant ruffle and then we're gonna attach it to the bottom of the apron. If you don't have a gathering foot, no worries. You can also gather fabric without a gathering foot. You can use the basting method or my other favorite method, the zigzag method. And I have videos for both of those, so make sure you check those out. Links will be down below or there'll be a card up here. So I have my gathering foot attached and I've made my stitch length up to five and I've got my tension to 6.4. So let's gather some fabric. When you get to the end, back stitch and cut.
We have so much gathered ruffle and I just love it. I think I even have a little extra to do something else with. Gotta love that. So now we're going to lay it around the hem and we're gonna pin it on and then all we need to do is sew it on right where we gathered it and then we are done and we get to try this apron on and check it out. So I'm pinning this about an inch up from the hem so that way it's nice and secure and the ruffle has a little bit of a backing to it. And you just wanna work your way all the way around making sure that your ruffle is nice and straight and the edges are popping up and not getting caught underneath. Okay, we are all pinned up and we can chop off the extra ruffle there. So I'm gonna leave about an inch after and go ahead and cut that off and then I can finish that edge later with the rolled hem or your zigzag or however you finished your ruffle edges. So now what we're gonna do is go back with the sewing machine and we are going to sew down right where we have that gathering stitch on the ruffle. So let's go sew that ruffle on and then we get to try it on. I'm super excited to try on this super girly, beautiful apron with a cat on it. So let's go sew. Okay, so we are just sewing right over that gathering stitch. All my settings are back to normal for a straight stitch. And we are just gonna work our way all the way around the hem. When you get to the end, back stitch and cut. We did it, we finished it. How cute is the ruffle on the bottom of this? I love the unique shape on the top of this apron and hello, the kitten pocket, just so cute. And let's check out the back. You can see the ties in the back. I think I'm ready to bake some cookies. What do you think? Speaking of doing things in this apron, I love the fullness in the bottom of it. It really lets you move around and it's not constricting at all. So if you're wearing a full dress, this is perfect to go over it. Or if you're just wearing your leggings around the house, it really lets you move around and you don't have any constriction. Thanks so much for watching So Anastasia today. I hope you enjoyed making this super fun apron with me. I just love all the unique details on this apron. It makes it really stand out. It makes it a super fun, unique piece, even though it's just an apron. Why not have fun with all of the things in your wardrobe, right? If you enjoyed this video today, make sure you give it a thumbs up, give it some applause, and leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what kind of aprons you like to wear or do you not wear an apron at all when you're working around the house or outside, gardening, working. Uh, what else could you use an apron for? Painting, crafting, pottery. There are so many different places in life to be using and wearing an apron. And I'd love to know where you like to use and wear your apron, so leave that down below in the comments. And if you're not already a follower to Sonia Anastasia, make sure you follow and hit that notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. And you might be wondering, where is that notification bell that I'm always talking about? It's right up in the corner of your page by your sign-in icon. So make sure you hit that notification bell. And if you don't follow me on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all those other fabulous social media websites, make sure you follow Zoe Anastasia so that way we can stay connected and creative together. And I would love to see all the projects you've been working on, so feel free to tag Zoe Anastasia in them so that way I can reshare them with everyone and keep us all inspired and creative. And don't forget, I now teach sewing class with my design studio here in Chicago, Illinois. So make sure you check those out at SewAnastasia.com and I teach them virtually so you can be anywhere in the world and take a sewing class with me. How cool is that? So check those out at SewAnastasia.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.